Oi vey, what a rainy day. Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how you can import a SIM brief flight plan into the Boeing 777-300ER by PMDG. Now this is a really, really, really handy feature and I'll show you a couple of the reasons why it's so handy. We'll also kind of walk you through sort of the process of uh, punching that flight plan for, you know, again, beginners. If you're a virtual airline or something, you're probably not watching this anyway, but hey, just in case you are, we'll go ahead and take a look at it. So let's go ahead and head over to SimBrief first. And uh, SimBrief is a wonderful service here. Uh, you can opt to do a lot of really, really cool things with it, depending on what it is you're trying to achieve. For us, what we're going to do is we're just going to be flying a very basic flight, um, probably my all-time favorite flight, just because I've done it so many times. Like, I could basically <laughs> 240 and go. Uh, we're going to be going from Bradley International Airport all the way to uh, Baltimore, Washington International, kind of the grandma kind of a thing like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to dial it in here. Uh, one thing you can have fun is you can come in here and I'll put on all sorts of things. Like you want to fly for Aeroflot, uh, Aeroflot 100, for example, you could pop that in there. You know, you want it to be a UAL 100, whatever you prefer, kind of a thing like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here. We're going to go ahead and set our aircraft type and we're going to swing down. Of course, we're dealing with the 777-300ER, which whoop, right there. Now, one of the greatest things ever is somebody already came in here and popped in the PMDG version, which is cool because it automatically takes into account the fuel factor, which is nice. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to dial in a cost index of 999. It basically says, I'm not paying for the gas, just get me there, kind of a thing like that is the way I always look at it. I just appreciate that one right there. So the next thing we're going to do is while well, that's kind of running, and again, everybody's all booted up, uh, speaking of booting up, oh, I was just going to say I heard a bunch of angry warning sounds kind of a second like that. Ah, oh, let's go ahead and fix that real fast. I, I'm sitting here on the ground, and that's what happens though, when you're not paying attention to all sorts of stuff here. Landing altitude, engine shutdown. Yeah, I know I shut all that stuff down. Relax. Relax, relax. All right, back to what we were doing here. So that's all set. So now what I'm going to do here is all this stuff is kind of unnecessary. You know, block time, I'm not going to play with that or anything. I'm going to take a look at the departure runway. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, we're going to say we're going to do uh, 370 passengers today. Uh, we're going to set a uh, freight to auto. And like I said, it's going to calculate all these things for us automatically. And it's going to give us a lovely little uh, route down here at the bottom. And that's a perfectly good route. Uh, it's actually, like I said, I got that one basically burned into my brain here. Now, in the old days, what you would do, of course, is you'd sit here. Oh, let me go ahead and pull that aside so we can kind of take a look at what we're going to have to do. We would come down here. Uh, we'd go ahead and type in our first white point. We'd type in Bradley International Airport. Pop that one in there in the upper left. And then we'd come in here and we do our BWI bra to more Washington International. we click there in the upper right. We'd press activate. We'd press execute, kind of a thing like that. And it would start kind of cooking and we'd go through the process. And uh, one of the things you'll notice is we have this new button that says root request. We have this other one, root report, and another one that says root save. Now, if we were doing this the old way, what would we do is we'd come in here and we'd press next page and we'd start dialing in all of our waypoints individually. I'll sit here for years and I click right here and start basically going through the process. That takes a minute, especially if you have 700 waypoints. <laughs> so instead what we're going to do is we're going to set up a root request out of our SIM brief here. So let's go ahead over back to a SIM brief real quickly here. I'll pull it down so you can see what's going on. I'm happy with all these variables. I'm going to come up here and press the generate flight button. So what that's going to do for us is that's basically going to generate the flight. And you can see it does a really, really nice job here. It's going to calculate all the critical components. It's going to tell us things like runways and stuff like that. But more importantly, it's going to save that flight into memory. Now, the reason we want it to be in memory is we're going to pop back over here real quickly here. You can see everything is looking pretty good. I'm going to come on down here. We've got our electronic flight bag. And there is a button that says request data from SimBrief. Now, one really important thing you have to note is you have to tell it that you want to use SimBrief with your name on it. And uh, to do that, there's actually a button right here. I'm not going to show this to you because I don't want people rating my SimBrief files again. But if you're actually able to click on this, there's a thing that says enter SimBrief name. You literally just type your name into it. And again, you can imagine where that button is right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and press request data from SimBrief. And now one of the things you'll notice is it will instantaneously populate all that cool data that we've actually captured. And now one of the things I love here is you can actually come in here and grab all the weather too while you're at it. It's just so cool how this works. I love this. So we can zoom in or we can take a look at our flight. We can click and drag if we need to kind of a thing. We can also switch map modes. And again, it's completely up to you kind of how you want to approach it. Lock orientation, I don't need any of that. But you can see our whole flight plan is uh, looking pretty groovy there kind of a thing like that was that so cool but now we've requested the data so it is in the computer if you want to think about it another way so what i'm going to do now is float back to my fmc here and i'm going to go ahead and press root request now when i press this it's going to say did you want the one that was saved the other day when you were practicing or do you want to do the one that we actually have loaded into the computer for me i want the simbrief one 
what it's going to do is bring up to this little page right here and it's going to give us a bunch of options here it's going to have our cost index there it is is there a fuel weight it's going to say would you like to set the planes payload and weight based on what you punched into SimBrief. Now, if you remember, we set a pretty heavy payload here. So if I actually click right here, it will lock that into our actual aircraft. So I'm gonna say, is that what you wanna do? I'm gonna say, yeah, sure. Do you wanna set the Sim fuel? Now, if I take a look here, you can see I've got 20,000 pounds of fuel. If you remember, we're supposed to be carrying 40,000 pounds of fuel. So if I click on select fuel, you will see it instantly sets our aircraft to the desired fuel that we got out of SimBrief. Like I said, isn't that fantastic? So now I'm going to come down here and press select routes and press that button. As soon as you do that, it's going to get a little freaky outy on you. It's basically talking to the SimBrief servers. It's saying, do you mind if I get this kind of a thing like that? You know, it's going to set its little route request. It's going to start scanning and going back and forth. And after a few moments, again, that can take a little while depending on how long your route is, it'll say, are you ready to do this? So it'll say, are you ready to load? Now, it's important that you press the load button here. And as soon as I press that, this thing's going to go, are you kidding me? Is that what you wanted to do? Uh, the answer is yes. A lot of things are going to get all funky when this is going. You can see down here at the bottom, it says route one uplink loading. Now, this process takes some time. Now, if you want to, you can actually come down here into the clear. You notice it says when update uh, link is ready. You can see performance in it uplink is ready. All those components are now ready. It's in the computer. So I'm going to press activate. And I'm going to press the execute button. Now, as soon as you've done that, you have to remember we're not done here programming this. So one thing I have within my runway is I'm actually going to dial in my runway here and press execute. Now, the second thing I'm going to do is go to my legs page and I'm just going to confirm that everything makes sense. And I'm going through this real quick. Veers would be our first waypoint. So that checks. If I go to root real quick, I can, again, I can check. There should be no discontinuities. We did a pretty good job when we planned this. Now, if I go back up to my front page here and go back to my index, uh, let's see, position, we want to go to root. You have to keep in mind that there are a couple of the pages in here that we need to think about. And one of them is our perf in it. So I'm actually going to click this button. And one of the things you're going to see here at the bottom is it's going to say, do you accept the data that came from SimBrief? We can either accept this or reject it. And remember, if you skip this step, it's going to get grumpy at you later. So I'm going to press the accept button. And what it's going to do is it's going to reach in and it's going to try to grab that data from SimBrief. One of the things you'll notice here is our cruise altitude is not the same as it was originally. It's at 30,000 feet. Now it says 32,000 feet. The other thing you're going to observe here is our zero fuel wheat and fuel wheat and our gross weight are not the same. Uh, this is not good for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually come over here. And I'm going to click right here. And what that's going to do is grab our zero fuel weight right there. And I can click on it. And now we'll actually add the fuel weight onto it and actually complete this page's data. So it's just like one of those little details. So I'm going to go to thrust limit here. And uh, one of the things you probably notice here is it did not capture uh, the required uh, thrust performance here. Um, you can see we're at 106.2% uh, attack, which is, that, that's enough. That's enough. But uh, one of the things we can do in SimBrief is we can actually have it calculate uh, what our appropriate power should be. So if I actually were to grab my whole monitor again here, I went to the takeoff performance page again. That's right up here if you want to play with it. Calculate, and you can see it crunches the numbers for me. Obviously, we're taking 2.4 today. So if I come down here, you can actually see that it's recommending runway 5, or 5 degrees of flaps, 46 degrees select temperature. Now, if uh, we skip that step, that's okay. Nothing bad's going to happen. But um, the nice thing here is we can actually come up here and dial in our 46 degrees right away so that it's basically ready to go. I don't know why it does that. Actually, I do know why it does that, but I don't like it when it does that. So there's our 46 degrees for our D-rated takeoff. So now if I go to takeoff, if you remember out of the computer, we're looking at five for our flap setting and our center of gravity position there. Um, we can go ahead and click here to capture it. 29.2. I'm going to click on it one more time, and it's going to tell us what setting we need to set our trim to. So we can actually come down here and dial in our four and a quarter units of trim right away. The other thing that's really, really cool here is you can see our V speeds are now listed across the side. Now, if we wanted to finish this up quickly, we could just come here, select our V speeds. And now the pre-flight for the FMS is completely finished for this airplane. And that's as much work as it really needs to be. And you got to admit, that's that, that's pretty easy. I like that. that. That's about as much work as that needs to be, especially if you're working on kind of like one of those kind of components. But like that, you can see we're all programmed. Um, what we'd have to do now, of course, is come up here and start fiddling with this and punch this into our V2, which is going to be 161 knots. And we just pop that in there like that. Start her up and uh, we'd just be on our way without a lot of heartache. Now, there's one more thing I just want to mention real quickly, too, here, is that our departures and arrivals 
did not get populated. If you actually come in here, one of the things you'll notice is we're not actually departing by either one of these. There's the Bradley 6 and the Coastal Line. The Bradley 6 basically means if you lose communication, go to 4,000 feet. But the other point of this that you're going to miss is if we go over here to Arrival, you'll notice that none of these got programs. So you're still responsible for that part of the route. If you were to skip that, of course, so when you got there, you'd get an end of route warning when you got to uh, BWI, and it would confuse the, you to death, basically. So just be mindful that that's not going to do it. And that when you do punch these things in, for example, for taking the Trish 3 by a Nuggy, you have to remember that you still need to tell it how to get there. So if I actually dial all this in, go to legs and go down, you will notice we now have our route as continuity. So even though it is a fantastic system, it does not know your approaches. So you have to be smart enough to basically dial that sucker in there. So now we actually have a reliable system. If you actually go to the progress page here, you can even see roughly what time we get there, which actually checks out pretty well. That's a pretty accurate given that um, we haven't even started this thing yet. So, but it gives you an idea of how useful this equipment is. Enjoy.